In this video, we're going to take a look at the inverse of an exponential graph. So let's start by first drawing an exponential graph. If you cannot remember how to draw an exponential graph, or if you want more practice on graphs themselves, then I have got a grade 11 course available. All you have to do is go to the All Courses tab on your home screen. So let's get started with the drawing of this exponential graph. And so a typical exponential graph, if you ever forget, does something like that, or sometimes it could be shifted up or down, and so then we had that dotted line called an asymptote. And so it might look something like that, for example, or it could sometimes go down. There's various combinations that could take place. But the most important things to try and find would definitely be a y-intercept. We can see that all three of these cut the y-axis. And then also an asymptote, we should look out for that. And then sometimes they have um, x-intercepts. For example, if our exponential graph looks like that, then it will also have an x-intercept. So we'll try find an x-intercept, a y-intercept, and the asymptote. So the asymptote is usually the easiest one. It's always going to be this number over here. So that's going to be a dotted line going across your graph at minus 4. And then we can just label that y equals to negative 4. So that's your asymptote done. The y-intercept we could do next. To find a y-intercept you always make x 0. And so we end up with 2 to the power of 0 which is 1. And then 1 minus 4 is going to give us negative 3. So our y-intercept will be 0, negative 3. And then many times exponential graphs won't have an x-intercept, but in this case we can clearly see that it will, because it has to go through this point over here, the y-intercept, so it has. To, so obviously it's going to be above the asymptote. It can't be below, because it would never cross over and somehow go through the y-intercept. So it's either going to come from up here, like that, or it's going to be the other way around it's definitely going to cut the x-intercept, or the x-axis, should I say. So to find the x-intercept, we are going to make y equal to 0. We then take 4 over to the left, then we know that two, two to, or 4 is the same as 2 to the power of 2. Then, because these base numbers are the same, we can then say that x is equal to 2. So your x-intercept is going to take place at 2 and 0. And there we have it. So now what we're going to do is take the inverse and see what type of shape we find. And so we're going to switch everything around. So this 2, 0 is now going to become 0, 2. 0 minus 3 is going to become minus 3, 0. And then you have to switch this as well. So that was y equals to minus 4. Now it just becomes x equals to minus 4. And so let's go plot all these points. So the first point we'll plot is 0, 2. Then it's minus 3 and 0 and then x equals to negative 4. And then we'll just plot the graph. So notice how on the original graph it gets very close to the asymptote. Well, the same will happen with the inverse. It'll also get very close to its inverse. So it'll do something like that. And so that is the inverse of an exponential graph. You may or may not have heard about this type of function yet, but it is we call this a log graph. Let's see if we could work out the equation of this inverse. So how do we work out the equation of an inverse? Well, you take the original, you switch the x and y values around, and then you try get the y alone again. So I took the 4 over. Now how do we get the y alone? Because you might be tempted to square root, but that you would do if it looked like that instead. But now the 2 and the y have switched places, and that is where the log feature helps us. So we all we do is we're looking for y, and so we say y equals, we then say log, you then put the number that was closest to the y at the bottom, and then in brackets you'll put everything else. So that'll be x plus. So that is a log graph.